Welcome to the Walton Pi. Today I'm going to go through a related rates problem. So before I get started, if you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing. It really helps me to keep making these videos. And if you really like these related rates problems, check out my video that comes out tomorrow because I'll be releasing another one, but the one tomorrow is going to be filled with more challenging types of problems. Okay, so to, for today's problem, I'm going to be talking about a sport that was played in the ancient land of Mathlandia. Okay, so there there's a sport that's played by dropping really heavy rocks off of a cliff and then trying to hit a target far, far below. So two competitors are going to stand eight meters apart at the top of a cliff. The first competitor, Emmy Nuther, drops her stone and then a second later the other competitor, Sophie Germain, drops her stone. So if the distance the rocks fall in meters follows the equation 4.9 t squared, where t is in seconds after you've dropped it, how fast are the two rocks moving apart after one second, one second after she dropped her stone? All right, so for this problem, because it's related rates, I would recommend always starting by drawing some sort of picture. So go ahead, pause the video, draw, and try and solve this on your own first. All right, so here's how I would set up my picture. I have the cliff, it's like this. I have the two people right here and right here. I would label how far apart they are. So they are eight meters apart. Okay. Then Emmy, she's dropped her stone and then a second later Sophie drops her stone. So we have a rock here and we have a rock here and both of them are falling down. Okay. The next one is we know that the distance as a function of time is going to be 4.9 t squared. So that's going to be the distance that they're falling. And we know that the time t is one second after Sophie. So let's label them. Oh, Sophie has no arms. Okay, so here's Sophie, here's Emmy and we are trying to figure out how far they have fallen. All right, so here we go. Let's go ahead and try and figure out this sort of relationship. So the question is, what's the velocity of the different stones? Because we're going to need to have some sort of related rates problem. In fact, Emmy stone's probably a little bit further farther down. So it's down here moving down. And we're trying to figure out what's the distance between these two stones. So we need to label that. That's what we're trying to find. So let's maybe label that D. So we are trying to find DD, DT. All right, so there we go, we got that. Now let's try and label anything else that we can about this triangle. Because what we have is these rocks are falling straight down, and then this rock's falling straight down. And because there's, they're really heavy, they're not gonna be blown around in the wind. So it's entirely based on their skill of can I eyeball exactly where this is going to land? So that means that distance there is always eight. All right. So now the question is, first, we're going to need to know what's this length here. So maybe we should label that some sort of value. So maybe let's label that y. So it's how far vertically it has. So y is a fairly natural choice there. But then the question is, how fast is y increasing? Well, this is where we're going to need to know a couple different things. We need to know how fast is this first rock moving down, and then how fast are we going to be having the second rock moving down? Because what we have is the rate that dy dt is changing, that's going to be equal to the velocity of Emmy's stone minus the velocity of Sophie's stone. Does that make sense? Because what they're doing is, if we were measuring how fast Emmy's stone is falling away from Sophie, then the Sophie end is not going to be moving. But Sophie, we're not measuring the distance to Sophie, we're measuring the distance to Sophie's stone. So that means that her stone is also moving down too. So that means we're going to need to figure out two different velocity things. Well, velocity, that's going to be the derivative of our distance with respect to time. I really picked a bad variable. That's d prime. <laughs> so this is going to be 9.8t. And then that's the same thing for both of them. The question is just how much longer has 
one been moving than the other? Well, Emmy Stone has been falling for one second longer than Sophie's. So that means we could write this as Emmy Stone is 9.8 times t plus 1, because it's been falling for one extra second, minus Sophie's 9.8 t. So all of that ends up being a fixed 9.8. So the, velo the dy dt is just always that fixed 9.8 meters per second. So now, how do we tie all of this together? Well, now that we have dy dt is fixed, what we have to do is we have to figure out how can we connect big D and little y? How can we connect those two together? So this is how we're going to do that. We just need to find a relationship between the two. It doesn't matter what the relationship is, we just need to find a relationship. Well, this is a right triangle. So that means that we have the relationship d squared is equal to h squared plus y squared. So then this is a relationship. We don't need to get this to be a function, we just need this to be a relationship. So now we can take the derivative of both sides and what we get is the following. We get 2 big D d d d t is equal to 0 plus 2y dy dt. Well, what are the things that we know? We, can f we don't know y, we don't know d, but we know dy dt, and we can solve for y and d. So let's go ahead and solve for what y and d are. Well, it's one second after Sophie's dropped her rock, so let's figure out the distance that we have here. So one second later, this is going to be a 4.9, because that's 4.9 times 1 squared. But then the distance that uh, Emmy's rock has fallen, that's going to be 4.9 times 2 squared. So that is going to be, so this entire distance here, that is 4.9 times 4, which is 19.6. So that means that y is 19.6 minus 4.9, so that means that y is going to just be 14.7. So we, we've solved for y, we have dy dt, we're trying to find d d d t, we just need to know what's d. Well we can take this value for y and plug it in here. So that means that d squared is h squared plus 14.7 squared. So d is going to be the square root of all of that. So it's the square root of 8 squared plus 14.7 squared. Let me quickly pull out a calculator and calculate what that is, because I'm not wanting to do that uh, by hand. So that's the square root of 280.09, and raise that to the 0.5. So d is about 16.74. Okay, so we take all of those pieces together and we can plug them all in. We can actually cancel a little bit so that 2 and that 2 will cancel. So we get dd dt is equal to y 14.7 dy dt 9.8 divided by big D 16.74 we go ahead and calculate all of that out. So we get 14.7 times 9.8 divided by 16.74, and we get 8.61 meters per second. That is how fast the two rocks are moving apart one second after Sophie dropped her stone. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please consider liking and subscribing. Um, as a reminder, tomorrow I'm going to be releasing another uh, related rates problem, except that one is going to be two different problems, and the problems are significantly trickier than this one, um, just because of the types of problems that they are being set up. So if this was helpful, please like and subscribe, and please share it with any of your friends who also are curious about related rates. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and good luck with all of your math.